Let us pray. Our Father, we are asking that you will make your word clear to every one of us this afternoon and this morning in Jesus' name. Lead us in your right way. Give us a listening ear, an understanding heart that will be able to follow you every step of the way. In Jesus' name we pray. This month, as we earlier announced, we are handling the marriage problem, the family problem, and all concerning marriage and family in every one of our lives. Ni osu gege bi ati fi se ifi lo. A o ma soro lori igbeyawo, awon isoro to wa ninu igbeyawo ninu ebi ati jito omo. We have also announced that you should drop your questions on marriage in the boxes for questions that are provided so that we can read these questions and see how to help you as we answer these questions in the messages. As it is all people by name, very few call, close to us in our own, a good tea, very, see a good car, Chris, you know, a bongoy, housing, more, our car, our village, your Jew, I want, you should, you should, you should, you should, you should, you should, this morning we are going to allow the Lord to speak to us on finding, knowing and doing God's will. Ni aroi, au soro lori, we wife a lorun mimo ati shishe. That is, we are talking on how to make the right decision. Immediately we announce such a subject, some people are tuned up, they say, well, today is not for me because I am married already. It is a wrong notion in the midst of believers that we only pray to find the will of God when we want to get married. We do not realize that throughout life we make decisions and those decisions either make or mar us, either develop us or destroy us. There are questions relating to our personal lives, our personal happiness in life, our progress in life, and we need to find the will of God concerning them. Every time in the family, in the home, and every time in your place of work, you're asking for the right step to take. You are asking for the proper decision to make. In short, you you want to find the will of God for every day, every week, and every month, every year of your life. The question you are asking is, what is the will of God for my life? Your question may be, who should I marry? A man or a woman has spoken to you, and the question you are asking is, is God leading me to this man or this woman? You know, even there are times it's not a marriage, but you are asking, which church should I attend? You want to know the will of God. After you are married, you want to know what is a proper decision to take. Should my wife be full? time housewife or should I allow her to take a walk in the office you want to know the will of God my wife is bringing a suggestion she wants to go back to school to go and finish her education at our marriage was the will of God was a proper decision to take that's why it's important to listen Life centers around making decisions. Asking, seeking, finding, knowing, and doing God's will. Sometimes you are asking that this work I am in, should I change my present employment? In short, you are looking for the will of God in that area. 
si o ye ki kuro ni bi ise na kin wa ise miran o ti o nso ni pe o n fe wa o n fe mo if your lord sometimes you want to know should i rent or should i build a house of my own if i'm going to build should i build in a hometown or build in lagos that's also wanting to know god's will igba miran o fe mo if your lord ni pa aboya e ki o lo ya ile gbe ni tabi pe ki o ko ile ti re tabi pe ki o ko le si ilu re ni tabi ki o ko ile seko o n fe mo if your lord now that i am married will the mother of the husband or the mother of the wife live with us in the family you want to know what's the proper decision to take there is a way you can know how to find the will of god in that area ni igba miran nigba to ba ti se igbeyawo wa fe mo boya o ye ki iya iyawo re tabi iya oko re ki o ma gbe le pelu yin o n fe mo o n fe mo kankan nipa ile ile je we why did for olorun shall we have a young lady a young girl a relative to live with us and be a helper in the home you want to know the will of god in je o ye fun wa lati ni omo odo kekere kan boya aburu aburu mi lo berin ni ki o ma gbe odo wa lati ma ran wa lowo ninu ise ti an se nile wa fe ma ife olorun ninu yi if the maid living with us is be is misbehaving should we send her back home or should we allow her to stay you want to know the will of god before deciding omo omo odo ti o n gbe odo wa ti o ba wa sise ti o si n si wa ho nje o ye fun wa lati pe ki a ran lo si ki a ran lo si le pada tabi ki agba laye lati ma farada fun ewa fe ma ife olorun now we married and we have three four children and my mother is saying bring one my husband's mother is saying bring one granny i told me say send one to me what's the will of god should we send the children home to mommy or to granny and then so we can be freer you want to know the will of god eh e ti bi ma meta tabi mi bi merin iya iya mi iya iya won wi pe mu eyo kan wa fun mi iya iya kan wi pe mu eyo kan wa fun mi iya eh iya iya tun so wi pe e mu eyo kan wa fun mi o si nfe mo boya ife olorun tabi ki se ife olorun pe ki eh fun amo won e ka bi eyi sometimes you want to make a major purchase after you are married ni igba miran e o fe ra nkan ti o se pataki ni leyin igba te ba ti se gbe awon you decide that there is confusion should we make this major purchase or not in short to finding out what's the will of god how do i take the proper decision and eh ni igba te ba fe ra nkan e e o ro boya nje o ye ki o ra nje ko ye ki o ma ra wa si ma ro pe ba o ni o se ye ki o se ipinu to ye yi ni pe o fe wa di ife olorun your own may just be what career should i choose in life or should i change my career i being a trader should i now go into another area of work ti re le je pe ise lo lo fe yi pada ninu aye o tin sese kan tele ri nje o ya wa ye fun lati kuro ninu ise na fun apere boya o je oni se owo o si fe fi owo sise sile ki o lo sinu ise miran o fe ma ife olorun from the beginning of young adult you in your life you start making decisions choices that may help you or hinder you develop you or destroy you lati ibere igba ti o ba tin di eni to ndagba na ni wa ti be si ma se pinu yala awon ipinu won yo gbe o soke ni tabi yo re o sile yala yo tu o se ni tabi ki o ba o je ki o so de do ani you know sometimes when young people come and they say they want to get married igba mira awon odo mo de wa 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 so wi pe awon awon fe se gbe yawo and we tell them find out the will of god how to so fun wi pe why did for olorun na and they say what do you mean by the will of god wa ni kini nkan to nso ni pa ife olorun then we ask them so you don't know what it means to find the will of god how wa bi won le re pe eyi ni ni pe o ko mo ti a pe ni ife olorun when you went to school didn't you find the will of god before going to school igba ti o lo sile ewe ko ha wa di ife olorun ki o tu lo ni when you want to buy something apart from marriage did you not know how to find the will of god before buying that thing igba ti o fe ra nkan se aju igbe ya wo nje ko wa di ife olorun ki o tu ra nkan yi choosing your friend even ordinary friends didn't you find the will of god iyan ore ore laso laso pa pa nje ko wa di ife olorun parking from one place to the other did you just park as a christian so you didn't find the will of god so ma ko lo lati bi kan si e si o miran ije o kan ko lo lasan lai je pe o wa di ife olorun you know some people don't know we find the will of god in different areas of our lives awon e lo miran won ko mo yi pe o ye fun eniyan lati why di ife olorun ni gbogbo ipa ona igbe si aye some people act as if you know when they want to get married and they tell them find the will of god they say okay i will try and they pray and pray they say god you show me your will this time once i get your will for this marriage I will never talk to you about finding your will. I just live my life anyhow I like. This will of God is so difficult to find. I want mirror nigba to ba so fun pe ki o wa di ife Olorun. Nigba to ba fe se gbe yawo. Won ni ko buru ni pati gbe yawo e ma gbiyanju. Won a gbadura gbadura titi won a si so fun Olorun pe Olorun fi di ife re han mi pa gbe yawo to ba le fi le han mi le kan yosu. Tin ba ti le se o gbogbo iyoku ninu igbe si aye mi ko ni lo pe ki ma ife re ma. My brother, my sister, the praying to find the will of God before you marry is a trick. in ground to prepare you to know how to find the will of god in many 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 things after you have got married ara kun ara binin mi 
lati wa di fi olorun ninu eh ki o to se gbe iyawo o je ibi keko fun o lati le ma wa di fi olorun ninu awon kan miran ni igbese aye re to ba nfe dawo le lojo iwaju if you do it faithfully today to find the will of god when you get into the marriage you'll be able to know how to find the will of god in all the areas of marriage to ba se pelu otito kan loni lati gbadura ki o si wa di fi olorun ki o to se gbe iyawo yi nigba to ba se gbe iyawo na tan ninu awon kan miran to ba nfe dawo le wa le wa di fi olorun yo si ro olorun do you know when i was young we used to have a type of this my brother much much younger and uh, you know much smaller will hold something and put it down now we'll take staff and then we'll bind the eyes of that child and then we we'll put him to be in that other place we we'll make him to run and see if he can catch this thing we're looking for and then we stay there and he's running and running before he gets to it we we'll pull it away hide it on the back we say <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get it, did you? <laughs> That's how we think God is being with us. We feel that God is blindfolding us. Putting his will somewhere. And then we're running and running. Just before you get it. God will put it back. Hide it at the back. And God will say. You'll never get it. Did you get it? Oh no, you'll never try again. And then you'll start that plane again. And then it blindfolds you. And you pray and pray and pray. You see counseling. You read the Bible. You do everything you can do. Just before you get it. Then God in a play you know, will hide it again. We never got it until we ended the until we ended the play. God is not doing child's play. God is very serious about finding his will. He wants you to find it. He will help you to find it. It's not difficult to know God. It is not difficult to know the will of God to find the will of God. And if you are really attentive to the word of God and believing from this day, you will never have problems seeking and finding the will of God. He wants to help us. Why should he blindfold us? Why should he be hiding his will from us? But you see, we ourselves must sincerely desire to want to know and to find that will of God. I've told you that praying specifically to know God's will in marriage is only the starting point. It's the practicing ground. It will give you experience in praying to know and find the will will of God in your future life in all areas of life. And my brother, my sister, if you have known the will of God, allow that other person also to practice it, to pray and to know personally how to find the will of God. Because when you come together and you begin to live together, there will be major uh, difficult issues on which you will want to find the will of God. If both of you get married and you know how to find the will of God and she does not know how to find the will of God there will always be disagreement in your marriage. Confusion and argument because you see you are disciplined and trained in finding the will of God. But the other person is not trained in that way. She doesn't know how to find the will of God. Let her also know how to find the will of God so it will help you when you get married. Those who have got married, they know that one of the difficult areas is in taking decisions at all because one of them masters the art of making decisions and the other one is totally ignorant in making decisions 
bi ati mu ipinu ninu e ninu ile ekeji si ja opesi nkan yi one is quick impulsive thoughtless and short sighted okan e kini o je ele ti ko le ti ko le tete ronu ati ele ti oju re ku mu han lati the one is very thoughtful and slow and calculating and wise and purposeful and prayerful ekeji o si je ele ti o ma fara bale ti o si ma nwo nkan bi e bi o ti ye to tun ma nro nu ti o si je ni to kun fun adura to tun ni an experiment was performed uh, sometimes ago eh won se awari nkan kan ni igba kan many people were interviewed on how they make decisions i went gore ni ani aforo wa lenu wo lori bi ati nse kinu found out something that is terrifying and fearful for humanity won si wa se awari nkan kan ti o ba ni leru nipa eni they found they tried to find out how people made decisions when they were 5 years of age won gbe yanju lati wa di lenu awon eni adun won te nse ipinu ni igba to wa lo mo du marun when they grow to 10 years of age they also try to know they took their decisions won to wa de didi di igba to won fi wa ni omo du mewa bi won tin se ipinu when they got to the age of 20 they found out how they made their decisions igba to won wa ni omo gbo do won wa di won tin se ipinu and when they got to the age of 35 they found out how they make their decisions igba to won di omo du marun di logoju won wa di won tin se ipinu you know what the experiments discovered ijo mo tin kan awa wa de Discovered that for a human being, except for the exceptional cases, but for the generality of people, the way you made your decisions at five, at ten, at twenty is exactly the same as the way you made that decision at the age of thirty-five. Maybe you think she is pinu, you are madu manu, you are madu mewa, you are madu madu. Back then, you think she is pinu. You are madu manu, you are madu manu. The logo is see this way. How do children take their decisions? If that thing gives me a present temporary feeling of satisfaction, I choose it. I do it. Big, big, can you talk about me? Nee, tell on you. Nee, see, see, in front side, yeah, no shit. At five, that's how we take decisions. You are madman. We are teaching you. At ten, that's how we take decisions. You are madman. We are teaching you. At twenty, that's how we take decisions. You are madman. We are teaching you. At thirty-five, that's how we take decisions. You are madman. The logo is we are teaching you. At sixty, that's how we take decisions. You are madman. We are teaching you. We don't look far ahead. If it gives me present feeling of satisfaction, temporarily today, I choose it. I do it. Now, if there is a door of circumstance open before me, I get it. Look at little children. And they may want to go this direction. If the door is locked, and they just look at this other door, and the door is open. Immediately, that child will take decision. I'm not going there anymore. This way, I'm going to because the door is open. Let's take a look. My young shape, you know, you need to look at it like one who needs to go back. My little touchy, you know. That's how we did at five. That's how we do at ten. That's how we do at twenty. We are teaching them how to manage. How to do me. How to do what. If the door is closed, she like combati. We don't pray. We don't ask God. We say, well, one door is open here. That's my way. That's where I'm going. He like because she see like me. He be too much learning. He be too much learning. And you know there are people that take decisions that way. Oh, see, my people, you know what? Oh, man, move. You know what? Bear. Oh, for little children, if they have a number of little children like themselves saying, do it, do it, the majority will carry the vote. Oh, my people, oh, man, they never talk about it. It is like they want to go once or pay she she. Oh, go go one and you. I know one person that never carried that never followed the majority. That's our master, our savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. If Jesus told his disciples to vote whether he will go to the cross or not, he will never die for humanity. In Jesus Christ, we have the mature pattern of taking decisions. Jesus Christ, Brother, my sister, what made the children of Israel not to get to the land of Canaan? The majority said, "Don't go." They didn't go. And so many people still take decisions, like they took it in the past, just to depend upon the advice of many other people of the majority around them. Have you ever looked at little children? Yet you are more worried. Little children are always doing something because there is a fear of doing nothing. Eh, I'm a dear man. She, I can need to read. Eh, we pay one shilling. Can you know if you are doing nothing, they feel something is wrong with you. Oh my, pay you. But she, I can handle. We pay. I can lose you. Little children cannot sit down and be quiet for one hour, for two hours. There is a fear of doing nothing. So get up and do something. Little children, I'm a dear man. Better. We pay. Boy, I'm a dear 
That's how some people take decisions. They fear doing nothing. They fear being slow. They fear the consequence of delay and patience. So they decide quickly and do something in a hurry. You know, I know little children because I was one before. And if you are holding something that looks attractive, it may not be important, it may not be essential, it may not be significant to his happiness. If it is attractive, he wants it immediately. The people who do advertising, you see the billboards on our road, they know that adults are children. They know that when you are 60, you are just like six. They know the way you think is the way the little children think. If it is attractive, get it. That's how we decided when we were young. And today, when we're 25 or 30 or 45 or 70, if it is attractive, get it. You want it. You need it. And that's how some people get married. Because they have not developed, they have not been matured in their way of making decisions. You know, sometimes you are sitting down. All of a sudden, there is a sudden impulse, a quick desire, and you just suddenly discover that you want something. And you know when we were young, and you know these little children they are playing, all of a sudden, a little child sees another little child having something, it draws interest in every other thing in life. There is a sudden impulse, a quick desire and there is an immediate action that may lead to eventual dissatisfaction and the child begins to cry he wants that thing immediately what's the name of that thing he doesn't know what will that thing do for you he doesn't know what's the advantage of that thing he doesn't know what do you have that is more important than that thing. He doesn't know. There's a sudden impulse. There's a quick desire. And he wants immediate action. Give it to me immediately. You know something? When we become older, we just see a car on the street. There's a sudden impulse. There is a quick desire. There is immediate action. We go to the showroom the second day. We want to get that car. If we don't get Get it one happy throughout life. I mean, you go to you know you go to a fellowship, you go to a place where some friends are together. You see somebody putting on a type of clothes, and the thing may just when you put it in water, it becomes like paper. But you see it, and immediately there is a sudden impulse, a quick desire, there is an immediate action you want to take, you want it immediately. What's that telling me and telling you? The way we were at 6 is the way we are at 36, we have not changed. And in marriage it is the same. You know I just see a lady, I say that well, that lady is tall enough, plumpy enough, fair enough, well dressed enough. There is a quick impulse, a sudden impulse, a quick desire. And I'm saying, God, you don't give me that lady to marry. I will weep and weep until ever will not be able to do anything else. Oh God, if you love me, get me that woman. If I am not 
serving Jesus Christ in vain, get me that woman. If you want me to be happy in life, get me that woman. If you don't want my friendship, get me that woman. If you don't want 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 Uh, Job chapter thirty-four. Job bori kani lilogma. I'm reading verses thirty-one and thirty-two. Muka se koko kani lilogma atikeji lilogma. Surely it is meet proper to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement. I will of, I will not offend any more that which I see not. Teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Ni tori pe ene kan hale, hale wi fun alon pe emiji alaiche. E yiti e mi kori i wa fi kome. You know, in our life, we do not have wisdom. We do not understand what to choose, how to choose, when to choose a. I'm pointing three men to you in the Bible. They needed to decide on an important thing. We're going to see how they decided. What motivated their decision? And what is the result or the consequence of the decision they took? The first man is David. In First Samuel, chapter 23. I'm reading there from verse one to verse five. David saying, "Behold, the Philistines fight against Kela, and they rob the threshing floor." Therefore, David inquired of the Lord, saying, "Shall I go and smite these Philistines?" And the Lord said unto David, "Go and smite the Philistines and save Kela." Once we found that Philistine, Saul and one of the Philistines and Barak Kela jagun. Once he jah, he lay back and one he lay. David is very Lord of Luwape. Ki ebi ki oko ki o loko lu anwara Philistia wan ibi uluwa si we funda fi diki lo ki o si kolu anwara Philistia ki o si ba kaila si le David done an important decision to make. David ni ipi no kwata ki kan lati she. He knew that he was short sighted. Oh my, ki o ju unko muka. He was not going to depend upon his feeling. Oni beke le i i malara re la. We are told he inquired of the Lord. So far you go be Lord of Luwa. Now come with me to First Kings. Ba mi lo si nu anwa ba ki ni. And see another one. Ki o si tunri o mi na. Another individual. Hello mi na. First Kings. Kings chapter twelve. Eh, you were on my back. You need to read it again. From verse six. Last year, say it carefully. First Kings chapter twelve. I'm on my back. You need to read it again. Verse six. Last year, say it carefully. And the king Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while they yet lived, and said. How do ye advise that I may answer these people? The whole world must be bound one by one. But if my brother only was just Solomon, he was bare. He was too well liked. He was weak. He was not clear. He died. 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 Here is a person that will not pray but will ask old men. There's an advantage of asking old men questions. They have made more mistakes in life. That's one quality old men have. More than young people. And because they have made many mistakes in life, they are able to point to the stumbling stone. 
stones, they will say, children, look at that. I stumbled over that stone. When they talk, I see Okuta de Bulu. I will pay other Monday, who Okuta de Bulu, the Motikos and Ibed. But there is no one as ancient as the ancient of days. There is no one that is wise as the wiser than Solomon. There is no one that knows the plan of your life, the direction you should go as the Almighty God in heaven. Old men may see far, but they cannot see as far as God can see. But this Rehoboam did not even follow the advice that the old men gave him. In verse 8, but he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him which stood before him. That's another example. Oh, you will know he ruined his life. He lost the throne. He lost the great thing that God Himself had provided for him. Let me show you the third man. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 4. 1 Samuel 28. From verse 4. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And so gathered all Israel together and they pitched in. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and he said, Greatly tremble. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him. Not Nibati saw Lucy Bede, Lord Olua, Olua could die. Now we're talking about a man that did not even pray. As on it, I need to go to Legbad, and we said that is not good enough. As we pay Leco Bodumo. Now we see another man that even prayed and inquired of the Lord. Our dear Lumina took bad rat to Tile Wau Jolon. And the Bible said God looked at him. This is interpretation kneeling down and talking. And God uh, drew the curtain and said, Who is that? And the angel said, Saul. And God turned his face away. He said, Don't give him any answer. Eleni to Mare, any pay. And yet there was a man called David. The moment he started to pray, God began to give him the answer. What's the difference? One had relationship with God, the other one was in rebellion. Rebellion against God. So if you are going to find the will of God, you are praying about the will of God. Do you have relationship with God? David had the promises of God. David Turn with me to Psalm 32. Verse 8. And if you are a child of God, this is a promise for you. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Psalm 37 verse 23 The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delighteth in his way. Psalm 73, verse 24. David Thou wilt, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. I Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17. Isaiah 
Isaiah 48 verse 17. Isaiah Urike Jidila Adota Esa Iketa Dilo. Thus says the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit, which leadest thee by the way that thou shouldest go. By Ili Oluwa we Olura Padare, and Emi Ma Israeli, Emi Do Oluwa Lonore, Ti Oko Ti Oko Funere. You see, when you are a child of God, you have the promise of God. He says, don't be afraid, I will lead you. I will guide you. I will show you the way you must go. That's what gives you confidence when you pray. Before you pray, make up your mind. Settle it in your heart, God will answer me. And he will answer. Don't think that God is playing the game of hide and seek with you. He loves you. You are a child of God. He wants to direct you even more than you want the will of God. I told you about Saul, but then he prayed and there was no answer. What was the problem with Saul? Four problems. He may want to write it down. One, the problem of sin. In Psalm 66 verse 18. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 24 Because I have called and ye refused I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded Twenty-five, but ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. Verse 28, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. So if you are seeking the will of God, remove the sin problem. God is not difficult to find his will. He is not so far away you cannot hear him talk to you. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and a stranger's voice they will not follow. The second problem is the problem of self-will. Oh God, lead me as to what to do, but I don't want to do this. God, I like to get married, but it must not be somebody from an number stage. Oh God, you know I'm seeking your will. I really want you to direct me. But I hope you'll give me a graduate because you know I have a lot of grammar to blow and I need somebody to blow that grammar with. You see, God is a tailor. Don't tell him how to sew the clothes. He knows your stature. He knows the size that will fit you. He knows the color that will match you. Give everything to him. And when you come and he puts that clothes upon you, man, people will ask you, who did this for you? That's the, that's the almighty God in heaven. His power perfect at everything. Don't you remember in the don't you remember in the wilderness? The children of Israel did not go describing to God the type of food to give them. He knows all the vitamins they need in their body. 
awon omo Israeli ko re si ma fe so fun Olorun pe ro nje bayi ro nje bayi la ni lo sugbon ohun lo mo nje ti yo sara won lore how foolish for me child of yesterday to be dictating to god the ancient of days what to give me doesn't he know more than i know ba oni o se je wa mu go fun mi to ke emi o ma na ki wa ma so fun Olorun pe nkan bayi nkan bayi ni ko se ko wa mo ju mi lo ni nitori pe ohun eni agbagba ni the problem of finding the will of god in prayer is a problem of self will the decided interest on a particular thing let god choose remove your hand from that sin wahala to nbe ninu igbeyawo na ni wahala e fe nu e wahala e fe nu ara ni ki o ti pinu lori nkan ti o nfe se iwo yowo re kuro ninu nkan ni ko si je ki olorun ba o john chapter 7 verse 17 ninu we johanna ori keje ese keta ni if any man will do his will he shall know bi eni kan bi eni kan ba fe se ife re yo mo if any man will do his will god will make you to know that will and the teaching and the word whether it's of god or not bi eni kan ni ba fe lati se ife re yo mo boya ife boya ife olorun ni tabi ti se ife olorun but you know if i'm self will ti ma ti won ba je ta se a se tara a ta se ni olori kun kun and i'm telling god dictating to god this is what you must do if you know what to do why are you asking god again ti mo se so fun olorun pe nkan ti o gbodo se ni nkan ti mo n fe se ni nigba to ti mo nkan ti o fe se kilo kilo de ti o tun bere just have faith in god sa ni gbagbo ni no knows better than you know o mo ti bi o se no so your need o mo gbugbu ai ni let him choose and you will never regret his choice ko yan o ko si ni ka ba iyan re ti o yan fun another problem we saw was a problem of unbelief wahala miran tun ni wahala igbagbo there is an act of unbelief there is a state of unbelief there's a difference between both ah uh, okay igbagbo nbe ba kan na ni ko igbagbo nbe iya to si nbe laarin mejeji you see sometimes when you are sick your faith may not be strong enough ni igbagbo miran to ba nse asan igbagbo re o le ma lagbara to you are not in a state of unbelief it only happens at that point or moment in time you have a little down o ipo igbagbo ko ni o wa ni igba na o kan sele bi pe ni akoko na ti nkan yin sele ti won sha isan yo ni iye meji die but there are people who are in a complete total entire stage of unbelief ba won miran wa to je pe ipo igbagbo ni won wa patapata and you know people like that when they are asking god something they really don't mean it because they don't believe god is going to answer anyway o se ma pe iru awon eyan be ni gba to ma wi pe won bere o kan lowo olorun o ti o kan wa ni tori pe won igbagbo pe olorun yo da won don't put yourself in a state of unbelief if you are asking for god's perfect will in a matter ma se ma se ni aibagbo ninu okan re nigba to ba n bere won kan lowo olorun lati ma ife pipe re in james chapter 1 ninu we jacob ori pe but say ese ikefa but let him ask in faith nothing wavering sugba ki o bere ni igbagbo lai si emeji for he that wavers is a wave is like a wave of the sea a driven with the wind to and tossed nitori eni to se meji da bi igbe omi okun tin tin ti owo afefe bi si wa bi sehin ti a sin ru soke let not that man sing that he shall receive any sin of the lord nitori ki ru eniyan be ma se ro pe oyin o ri ohun ko n gba lowo oluwa a double minded man is unstable in all his ways eniyan o ni e meji je alai duro ni ona re gbogbo another problem with saul was that there was an idol in the heart wahala miran pelu saul ni pe orisha kan be lokan re you see covetousness is idolatry according to colossians chapter 3 verse 5 gaga bi ko lo se ori keta ese ikarun oju kokuro je iborisha and ezekiel chapter 14 verses 3 and 4 tell us ezekiel ori kerin la ese iketa ati kerin so fun wa ezekiel chapter 14 verses 3 and 4 ezekiel ori kerin la ese iketa ati kerin telling us that if we have an idol in the heart the lord will not be able to give us what we actually will need o so fun pe bi aba ni orisha lokan wa olorun ko ni fun wa ni nkan ti anilo ni toto son of man these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face shall i be inquired of at all by them omo eniyan awon okunrin won yi ti gbe orisha won si okan won won si fi ohun idigbolu ai se dede won si waju won emi o ha je ki won bere lowo mi rarabi therefore speak unto them and say unto them thus says the lord god every man of the house of israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and put at the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and comes to the prophet i will I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Nitori na so fun won ki o si wi fun won pe bayi ni Oluwa bayi ni Oluwa Olorun wi olukuruko okunrin ile Israel ti o gbe orisha re si okan re ti o si fi ohun idigbolu ai se dede re si waju re ti o si wa sodo woli 
emi oluwa yo da eni ti o wa lohun gege bi opolopo orisa re in second samuel chapter 22 ninu we samuel ikeji ori keji ni logun verse 27 ese iketa din logbon with the peel thou will show thyself peel and with the forward thou will show thyself on savory fun oninu funfun ni wo ofi ara are han fun ni funfun ati fun eni wiwo ni iwo ofi ara are han ni wiwo and my brother my sister never get into the mistake of having that idol and bringing the idol before god and saying god that is it give it to me ara kuri ara binrin mi ma se wa ni iko to je pe wa gbe orisa sokan ti wa si to olorun wa ti ma tu wa ma wi pe olorun orisa yin ni we wo fun mi ni kan yin psalm 106 and verses 14 verses 13 to 15 orin davidi ori ikerin dini adofa ese iketa lati ikerin la they soon forgot his works they waited not for his counsel won ko pe gbagbe ise re won ko si duro de imo re Verse 14 they lost the exceeding wilderness they, de they tempted God in the desert Verse 15 he gave them the fruit of the land Verse 16 he gave them their request but sent leanness into their soul Verse 16 he gave them their request but sent leanness into their soul now let me quickly show you the prerequisites, the prayer, the pitfall, and the principles. What are the prerequisites in finding the will of God? What is the prayer pattern in knowing the will of God? What are the pitfalls to avoid in finding the will of God? What are the principles of testing whether I've got the will of God or not? I'm sure you know that as you come here this morning, you don't think I will just stand up here. And I will say, if your brother Michael, can you stand up? You, know, you want to know the will of God? Yes, that's grace, and the other way, that's the will of God. And I will clap and say, God is wonderful. We said so. This time of revival, God is doing things that are new. Ati sokan Olorun ni ni We said so. This time of revival, God is doing things that are new. Ati sokan ni aku kwe soji Olorun mbai ni. I said, Janet, can you stand up? Ati sokan Janet. And then Janet stands up. Janet did do do. You see, uh, Olure me there. She already Olure me Olorun. That's the will of God. Oni fe Olorun. Next Saturday come and you can get married. No, just Saturday too much. What can we do? And we clap and we say, Oh God, praise the Lord. Ati sokan Olorun. No, my brother, my sister. We can't do that because you see, when you get married, you need to find out the will of God for your marriage. You won't have me around after you have got married asking, What's the will of God as a buying car? If you are going to decide on the will of God, a major and minor issues in your life. Life. After the marriage, get it started right now to know how to find the will of God. Number one, the prerequisites in finding the will of God. Number one, it says be a child of God. That's important. That's foundational. God doesn't talk to strangers as he talks to children. He does not give the bread meant for the children to the dogs. He does not mix the children of light and the children of darkness together. You want to have the privilege of the counsel of God, of the mind of God, of the will of God, come into the fold, become a child of God. That's a prerequisite. Number two, act on what you already understand in the word of God. The Bible says you love your enemy. Act on that first. Let God know you are serious on the word of God. The Bible says you pray without season. Then get at it. Kneel down. Pray because you understand that already. While you are waiting for what you don't understand. 
understand. Start acting on what you understand. Then be willing to accept before you know his will because he loves you. I've read that to you already in John chapter 7 verse 17. If you are willing, you will know. God has your best interest at heart. And the will of God begins by committing yourself absolutely, totally to the revealed will of God. If you are then for I, you must have a regular intake of the word of God as a prerequisite before you can find the will of God. If I reject or neglect what is revealed already, how can I go further to seek what is not revealed? Neglect of present revelation closes the door to further revelation. Prerequisite believe that God will show you his will before you ever seek the will. Believe it absolutely. Firmly in your heart. God loves me. He will show me his will. Let me clear up something here. All I've seen and come short of the glory of God. If God should mark iniquity, who will stand? Don't stay under guilt. You made a mistake before. You committed a sin before. Now don't stay under guilt and say, since I made a mistake before, committed sin before, God will never talk to me again. That's not true. Permit, it, permit me to put it this way. Previous disobedience is not a sentence to spiritual mediocrity. If God has forgiven you, forget about it. Act like a real child of God. And believe that God will actually lead you. I've given you the prerequisite. I now go to the praying. Now, this is real praying, my brother, my sister. You know the type of prayer that will take a prayer book and say, Oh God, oh God, when you are finding the will of God, put the prayer book aside. That thing is not there. You can't go to the house leader and say, My brother, you you can pray. When I listen to you pray, it's wonderful. Help me copy it down here. So that when I go to God, I take it before God and I say, Oh God, because it's the way our house fellowship leader prays. If you are finding the will of God, forget that. You want to find the will of God in a simple way. Say, God, you know my heart. Speak with your own voice to God. God doesn't look at grammar when you pray. He looks at face when you pray. God does not look at your stammering when you pray. He looks at your confidence when you pray. If you are a child, he says, Come in, let's have a talk together. 
Whenever there is doubt, go back on the love of God. Anybody can have doubt. Don't kill yourself because you have doubt. Whenever you are praying, you want to know the will of God. And the devil comes with a doubt. Stop that prayer. And just repeat to yourself. I know I'm a child of God. Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. Oh God, your word tells me that you love me and I believe it. Your promises are for me. I know that you are not a respecter of persons. Then remember past answers to your prayer. Remember your testimonies you have given. Remind God that time when this happened, you did this to me. At that other time when this happened, this is what you did for me. Let the love of God, the promises of God, and the testimony of past answers to your prayer raise up your faith. When the answer comes, there will be three qualities, you know, our time is gone, so I cannot go through the verses now. Number one, there will be peace within when the answer has come. Number two, there will be peace without when the answer has come. If the peace has come for today, Day after you have prayed to know the will of God, and you believe God is laying hand on that person on your behalf, on that other person on your behalf, and there is peace concerning it, it is possible that the second day doubt may come. Oh, she she, and you better back to back. Okay, all on one ball, one line, any. Need to read any season. Oh, she she, go just pray. No, lucky, you made it today. Then remember that if you trust God, lean upon God, that peace will settle again. Then there will be peace without. And you don't push everybody down to get to the will of God. You don't destroy your brothers and sisters so that you can lay hand on the will of God. The wisdom that is above is first peace. Then peaceable. Three, there will be confidence and assurance. Number three, the pitfalls to avoid. One never make decisions on circumstances only. Avoid using only your senses, you know, gauging it and examining it and evaluating it and looking at it and say, I think this one will do. No, make sure you are praying. Number four, there will be peace without. And don't push the will of God that way. Let the will of God come naturally. Let it come as a result of prayer. Don't make it, don't fabricate it yourself. Get the result and the answer from God. Then, for if you are determined to go your way, God may give it to you with fearful consequences. So humble yourself in the presence of God and just say, Lord, thy will be done. Listen to this. I cannot give you a more important thing in knowing the will of God on this point. This is important for you and for me. You know, sometimes you are praying. There is, peace, there is peace within. There is peace without. There is confidence and assurance within you. When you sleep, you sleep in the in the joy of God. And you're always praying, saying, Oh God, I thank you. I praise you. You have shown me your will. 
But understand, a problem may come after knowing the will of God. The problem is not to take the will of God away from you. The problem is to chase and develop your confidence. You remember Abraham following the will of God? Coming out of the of the Chaldees. And God says, Abraham. Abraham. I have something interesting for you. Come, let's go to the land where I will give to you. And Abraham said, That's a good idea. He accepted the will of God. There was peace within, peace without, confidence and assurance. If there was no peace within and without, you will never be able to pack his load. He packed, got his wife, and they were going. You know the very first place they got to? There was farming. Suppose they will say, well, God, did you call me? The farming is not to tell us the will of God. The farming is to make us go back to faith and know and prove the will of God in that farming. You know the problem with Job's friends? And they're still around. They will come to tell you. You. you know if there is a problem in your way it means it's not the will of God well even if it is not the will of God it's not the problem alone that will tell go back to God and say God how about it number six if you start in the spirit continue in the spirit if you have got the will of God by walking in faith continue in faith don't lean on your senses and go back to the flesh walking by side do you understand that if I look at a little part in a vehicle in a car I mean somebody just brings a, a screw out of the car a bolt you look at it it's ugly unimportant you are tempted to throw it away. It is only the mechanic that knows everything about the car that knows the importance of that ugly little metal in your hand. When I pull out, the wheel of God on a single point in my life, I look at that single point, that single wheel of God, it's an important to me, ugly to me, unreasonable to me, God from heaven is looking at that little thing, that single point, not in isolation, but in the totality of the will of God for the whole of your life. When you fit it, when you fit it into the whole of your life, it will serve, it will be beautiful and wonderful. Don't mistake feeling for fire. Let me end up with the principles of testing. One, the promise test is your conviction based on faith or is based on presumption and assumption. Is your anchor standing firm, anchored by the promises of God on this wheel of God which you say you have known tested by the promise of God. The promise test is important for you before you act on that will of God. Two, the purpose test. AKG. Does it fit into the overall purpose of God for your life? You are a Christian. Christian in your you want to glorify God in your life. If you go to marry a non-believer, does that fit into the perfect, final, overall purpose of your life? No, that's the purpose test. Number three, 
Even when you say you are marrying this believer, test it. Does it fit into the overall purpose, objective, and goal that God has given you in your life? Test it. Test it. Does it glorify God in the overall accomplishment of this thing you want to do? Mm. Test it, the purpose test. Promise test, purpose test, the peace test. The peace test, the peace of God. Until God gives you peace, abiding rest, freedom from strain and stress and worry. Don't step out. Wait. Wait. Now you say you have known the will of God. Picture yourself in the home of that man, in the home of that woman, and you are living together, sharing your life together. Does your peace still remain? Then for the pastor test. The promise test. The purpose test. The peace test. The pastor test. Don't act as an orphan. You have a representative of God here watching over your soul. Seek counseling from your pastor. And then place this in before the church because you see when all your advisors have gone, the church of God will still remain. I've told you what the Lord has written in his word. The Holy Ghost can explain all these things to our hearts. And as we go to God, I am believing God with you that from this day, it will be easy to find the will of God. God will show himself to you. He will guide you. He will not leave you like an orphan. He will not allow you to go through the tunnel in darkness without giving you the light to show you the way. He will lead us. He will guide us. And he will give us the grace and the ability to follow when he has spoken unto us. If you are looking for the will of God, Eli told Samuel, whenever you hear him touching you, calling you, uh, you know, just calling your attention, you speak to him, speak Lord for thy servant hearing. Pray the Lord will speak to every one of us. Rise up and let us pray. Thank the Lord for what he has taught us this morning. Ask him to open up his will to you. To make you detect and understand that will of God. He will trust him and depend upon him. He loves you. He will not allow you to go astray. If there has been a mistake in the past, put that under the blood of Jesus. And God Himself will guide and control, direct and lead, and He will make you to enjoy His will all through your life.